Good afternoon. Good afternoon. G'day. 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 Any Aussies here? <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, Yokoso, uh, welcome to our visitors too. Oh, we have some lovely visitors there. An old friend, Ray, and we've got Sue here today. And I see that uh, Gavin and Heckies uh, came a little bit late. That's all right. Have you got a note to say while you... That's all right. It's good to have you here. Great to have you here. And some wonderful visitors from Sydney too. That's fantastic to have you along. And all the regular ones. And we'll have some nice supper afterwards. Got some sausage rolls. Quiche. <laughs> well, I'm sure some of you watched the coronation last night. Mm, King Charles III, Westminster Abbey. Uh, Westminster Abbey. Can't say. Doesn't really look like Westminster Abbey here, does it, today? But, um, and there's no throne. No throne. No king, no king. But our king, the king of kings, is here with us today. That's exciting, isn't it? And he's here with us every week when we meet. That's very exciting. Well, next Sunday is Mother's Day. And today I wanted to look at not only what the Bible has to say about uh, mothers, but also what the Bible has to say about fathers. And we're going to begin with this famous verse and commandment and it's from exodus 20 verse 12 honor your father and mother honor your father and mother i think we've got that oh there we go there we can see look at that very handsome baby boy does anyone know who that baby boy is ah uh, greg ah greg son yes and uh my mother and father when i was a little boy in melbourne there you go Good-looking boy. I don't know what happened. It was good-looking then, but I don't know what happened. And <laughs> so <laughs> that's all right. We're going to have some fun. I was blessed to have my father until he died at the age of 91. Uh, Kuju Ichi, mm, 91. And I'm still blessed to have my mother, my haha. She is uh, now 93. Kuju son. In hospital, actually, but she's okay. She would have been here today, my, uh, my mother. But very blessed to have her at 93. I believe the life expectancy in Japan is now 84.91 years. So maybe I need to eat uh, more sakana, fish, is that right? Sakana, eat more fish, and less red meat. That's okay. I don't like blue meat. I don't like green meat. Red meat's good. Uh, and then maybe, maybe I could live to be 119. There was a lady who lived to be 119, Kane Tanaka. At one time, she was the world's oldest woman, and we might have a look at her. Uh, Kane Tanaka, have you heard of Kane Tanaka? Hmm? 119. Hmm? Hmm? Okay, have we got a photo? Oh. oh, yeah, 119 there. She wanted to be... Actually, she wanted to live to be um, 120. And at one time, just recently, she was the world's oldest woman. And she died just last year. Does it, so no one knows her story. Kane Tanaka. Oh, oh, okay. Satoshi, that's good. But she wasn't always an old woman like that. This is Kane when she was... Oh, look at that. 20. That's, that's 100 years ago. Um, dare I say... Uh, hmm. Kawaii Jose, Jose, pretty lady, I think pretty lady, there she was, yeah, 1923. I'm going to tell you a bit of her story. On the 2nd of January 1903, in a village on the southern island of Kyushu, the third daughter and seventh child of her parents, Kumayoshi and Kuma Ota, that's her parents, Kane and her family said she was actually born on... Boxing Day, 26 of December 1902, but her parents delayed the process of filing the report for a week because they weren't sure that she was going to survive. How's that? As she was born prematurely, but she did survive. So Kane, she married her cousin, Ideo Tanaka, in 1922, when she was just 19, she got married. And they had two sons, two daughters, the couple also adopted their niece, the second daughter of uh, Ideo's sister. Kane's eldest daughter died shortly after birth. 
and her second daughter died at the age of one in 1947, while her adoptive daughter died in 1945 at the age of 23 of an unspecified illness. So the couple, uh, they worked together in a store selling shiruku and uh, udon noodles. That was their business. Um, we're going to get to a really exciting part of the story in a moment. Kane's husband was later drafted into the military in which he served from 1937 to 1939. One of his sons was captured towards the end of World War II as a military POW and was held captive in Siberia and was finally released and returned home in 1947. But here's the part of her story that I love hearing. After World War II, the couple continued working in their store and Kane converted to Christianity under the ministry of pastors who were stationed by the United States military. So she became a Christian. Retired from working at the age of um, uh, 63, Kane travelled to the United States in the 1970s to visit her relatives in California and Colorado. A husband died in 1993 at the age of 90 after 71 years of marriage. She died, as I said last year, at the age of 119. She wanted to live to be 120. Who wants to live to be 120? <laughs> okay. Oh, Satoshi does. And what did she, and this is the question, what did she credit to her long life? People say, what's the secret to your long life? And she said, her faith in God, family, sleep, that's important, hope, eating good food, and practicing mathematics for longevity. She used to practice mathematics. I've even seen video clips, and she's doing maths. Good thing at her age. But isn't it great to hear that first she mentions her faith in God. And when I think of Kane, I think of this verse from Ephesians. I think we've got another slide here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. What is that saying in Ephesians? It's saying, children, obey your parents in the Lord. I'm not sure if she's listening to mum. I don't know if she's obeying. Uh, it says that. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Now, I would assume that Kane certainly honoured her parents. She got to 119. But in verse 4 in Ephesians, there is a warning to the fathers. And we've got a few fathers here today. Raise a father. Yeah, quite a few others here. So there is a warning to the fathers. Fathers, do not exasperate or, if you like, provoke to anger your children. Do we have another little slide there? I think, oh, look, he looks like he's been provoked to anger. You don't want to do that. Okay. So instead, bring up your children in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Do not provoke your children to anger. Now, I must confess... There are times when I have exasperated, provoked my children to anger. And as parents, we must be careful not to nag our children. I've written down shukoi. Is that right? Is that nag? Uh, shukoi. What's, na what's nag in Japanese? I'm not doing well. Forget that word. We'll just stay with nag. You know what I mean by nag? Okay. What's the word? Okay. I think you got you got the idea. So nag. In fact, um, my youngest son, Jaden's son, is this still working? I might have seems to have cut out. Mm. Hello. How about this one. Ooh. Testing. I'll talk loud. Switch. Switch to this one. Uh, switch to this one. That's okay. So what are we talking? We're talking about exasperating your children and, and, and uh, yeah, provoking them to anger. So it's good that my younger son is here today because Jaden's son is going to come down now and share for 30 minutes on how I have provoked my children to anger. You ready to do that? I'm sure it'll take him 30 minutes. No? Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't have the time, but he does have a 10-page list which he'll hand out at the end of the service. So I have been guilty of, uh, of doing that. Okay, let's look at the second part of this verse. 
Bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Don't be so concerned about a messy bedroom or an eye, eyebrow piercing. Uh, our eldest son had an eyebrow piercing, but and it's gone now. But be more concerned about encouraging them in their faith and make sure you lead by example and be as Christ-like as you can be as a parent. Next Sunday, some of us here will put aside time to bless our mothers. Mother's Day. Now, I also acknowledge that some of you may have lost your mothers in just recent times or, you know, you're separated by distance and, and you can't be with them. I'm also mindful today that, you know, Mother's Day can be a very happy occasion, but uh, for some, they've you know, even lost children and it's not a, a, a special occasion. You know, they're, they're reflecting on the loss of a, of a young one. Mother's Day in Japan, they've, they've got Mother's Day in Japan and the same date too, which is good because it's different dates all over the world. But in Japan, it's the second Sunday in May and for Japanese mothers, children often greet their mothers, I believe, saying, ha ha, no hi. Have we got that one right? Ha ha, no hi. Have we got, uh, and, and what they do is they often give them carnations. Have we got, oh, look at that carnation. I hope that's carnations. Is that carnations or is it? Uh, Nick, you'd know. I don't know flowers. Oh, he doesn't know flowers. Anyway, we give flowers on, 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 on Mother's Day. All right. Now, did you know that the celebration of Mother's Day began in the church? Did you know that? That's where it began, Mother's Day, in the church. A lot of things began in the church. I'll tell you a little bit of the story. 1876, going back again, Anne Jarvis was taking one of her Sunday school lessons and listening in was her daughter, Anna Jarvis, who allegedly found her inspiration for Mother's Day. As her mother closed her lesson with a prayer, she prayed, I hope and pray that someone sometime we'll find a memorial Mother's Day commemorating her for the matchless service she renders to humanity in every field of life. She is entitled to it. She heard that prayer and she thought, oh. May 10th, 1908, three years after a mother's death, Jarvis held a memorial ceremony to honour her mother and all the mothers at her local Methodist church. That's where it began. Although I didn't realise this till recently, she, she wasn't there actually, she wasn't even there, even there at the service, but she sent a telegram describing the significance of the day and 500 white carnations for all who attended the service. We might, have we got a picture there? Of, there she is. There, that's the, the, the lady who came up with Mother's Day, Anna Jarvis. But unfortunately, Mother's Day became commercialised. Nine years after the first official Mother's Day, it had become so rampant that Anna herself became a prominent opponent of what the day had become. And she spent all her inheritance and the rest of her life fighting what she saw as an abuse of the celebration. She decried the practice of purchasing greeting cards. <laughs> she didn't like it because she saw this as a sign of being too lazy to write a personal letter. And it can be, and I suppose now we might just send a text message. Love you, Mum. <laughs> but no, she didn't like it. So if you were to write a letter, a personal letter to your mother, maybe you could include this verse from the book of Proverbs. Let's have a look at this verse. Okay, I hope that's all good in Japanese there. That's from <coughs> Proverbs 31. And another family photo, people, that is actually my uh, late grandmother, Nana. I called her Nana, and so that's her when she was very young. Uh, Edith, she was born in England, so I thought I'd use a, a family photo. Proverbs 31, I'll read it to you in English. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Some wonderful words there. Now, uh, another... Another little interesting observation. In Australia or Western countries, if we come from a two-parent family and we're asked you know, about our family, most would start the list and saying, oh, I've got a father and I've got a mother, I've got a brother and I've got a sister. But in a survey in Japan, students were asked about their family and the overwhelming number of students began the list first with mother. 
according to this survey, mother. Even if they came from a two-parent home, they might say five people, uh, my mother, my father, elder sister, brother. Sometimes father even came at the end of the list. Sometimes grandparents feature in the list. But it doesn't matter who comes first on your list, as the Bible tells us to honour our father and mother. In Jewish tradition, this commandment requires one to honour both of one's parents equally. There is no greater weight given to either the father or the mother. While in some parts of scripture, the father is stated first, in others you'll find the mother comes first. This shows that the honour due to each is equal. Let me share another verse, and this is from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 1 verses 8 to 9, and it says, Pay close attention, my child, to your father's wise words. I love that. Your father's wise words. Father. Don't forget the next part. And never forget your mother's instructions, for their insight will bring you success, adorning you with grace-filled thoughts and giving you reins to guide your decisions. So don't forget your mother's thoughts. In fact, I was thinking today about some of my mother's instructions. I was just thinking back. Um, I think there's another slide there. Oh, yes, yeah, this this reminds me of what mum used to say. She'd say, eat all your dinner. There are children starving in Africa. And I'd say, I know, mum, and that's why I think we should box the leftovers and send it to them over in the post. And another thing she used to say was... um, Money doesn't grow on trees, Gregory. It doesn't grow on trees. And I'd say, oh, I'm not sure about that, Mum. I'm sure you mentioned something about the bank branch the other day. So, (laughs) let's go back to the scripture. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honour your father and mother. Now, let's let's be honest. Okay. Let's think about this, because for some... uh, They could find this command very hard. They may have been abused as a child. Their father may have left the family when when they were young. In the natural, I would find it very hard to honour a parent who would abuse me and not raise me in love. So this is is tough. I I went to a website called gotquestions.org and looked at what they had to say on this particular topic. The big question, how do we obey God's commandment to honour parents who behave with such cruelty towards their own children? Now, if you've been abused, be willing to forgive. This too will seem to be utterly impossible, especially for those who have suffered the worst kinds of abuse. Bitterness can sink into their souls, weighing them down like iron, yet there is nothing the Holy Spirit cannot soften and cleanse Mark 10, with God, all things are possible. Our Lord understands our pain. He was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. 2 Corinthians. So there is no need to fear being honest with God. If you find it difficult to forgive the wickedness of a parent's behaviour, talk to God about it. It's true that unforgiveness is sin, but only deliberate unforgiveness, where we have set our hearts like flint and vowed, no, no, I'm never going to forgive, even in situations with friendships. We shouldn't do that. A child, a child of God going to his father for help with something he cannot do for himself, um, you're not going to find an angry, threatening God waiting to punish you, but a father with a heart full of overwhelming love, compassion, mercy, and a desire to help. So, and this is all from gotquestions.org. This is what they have to say. What does honouring an abusive parents look like in real life? Here are some practical tips. By the grace of God, be willing to forgive. A willingness to forgive honours both God and the parent. Pray for your abuser. Let go of expectations that your parents will ever be the or the parent will ever be the parent you want him to be or her to be. They might never change. You know, they might continue to, uh, you know. Be unloving, reject God. Replace your disappointment and sadness with acceptance of who the person is. Cultivate an attitude of compassion for the things your parent did right. Even the mere fact that you're here, you're on this planet, you've got life. Express gratitude for even slight efforts to show love. 
refrain from making disparaging remarks about your parent. If it is safe to be in communication with your parent, establish wise boundaries to reduce sin sinful temptations for you and your parent. The Bible commands honour, but not remaining a prisoner in a dysfunctional family. Families with a destructive cycle of sin are dangerous, and children who break free need to find safety in the family of God. So I would certainly recommend to anyone who's in a dangerous situation, you've got to, you've got to get out of that, you know. Um, it's, it's a tough topic, this one. So that's a, just a few thoughts there from gotquestions.org. It's a deep subject. If parents are directing us to ungodly ways and wickedness, of course we will disobey. We follow Jesus, not man. Does that, does that sound right? Well, we read in Ezekiel, there's a passage in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 20, and it reads, I said to their children in the wilderness, do not follow the statutes of your parents to keep their laws or defile yourselves with their idols. They were told, you've got to keep away from that. I am the Lord your God, follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. The other night at my mother's place just last week, and she was going to be here today and couldn't make it, we were talking on godly things. In fact, thanks to Jaden, he was talking on godly things to um, my mother. And uh, we got talking about creation and, you know, how we as Christians believe in a designer, that we're not here by chance. And, and I said, uh, I was saying to mum, you know, we would never believe that something as intricate and technologically amazing as maybe a smartphone. We've got that there. Oh, it just came about. You know, all the parts were there and just over years and years and it all came together. We wouldn't believe that about a watch. We wouldn't believe that about a computer. And yet some people are saying, yeah, we're just all the bits came together and we're just here. <laughs> Big bang, whatever you like. Um, no, I believe there had to be a designer, just like this smartphone. But in the discussion also, I, I, I thank mum for sending me to Sunday school at the church when I was a boy. Not, and I didn't like Sunday school as a kid. I remember getting kicked out on one occasion. Um, but it's where I came to a knowledge and a faith in God. I think there's another little family shot there. Oh, there we go. Greggy in Sunday school in Melbourne. Can you spot me? Just look for the best looking one. Oh, there we go. Right in the centre there. Yeah. Wearing the tie in Sunday school. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Mum and Dad didn't go to church, but they sent me to Sunday school. And today, as we look at honouring your mother and father, I recall my own father looking after his mother in her later years. His sister lived interstate. We were living in Melbourne. They were here on the Gold Coast. And so he had that responsibility of looking after his mum, my nana. And uh, it was left up to him pretty much. And I remembered that, you know, uh, I've, I've always tried to do my best for my mum and dad in their later years, and I just remember Dad being, uh, you know, just always looking after Nana. So looking after your parents when they are elderly, I think, is one of the greatest things you can do to honour them. And I should also say that my own wife, Anne-Marie, who doesn't know she's going to get a mention in the sermon, um, was very devoted to her mother in her final years, and her days, as she began to struggle with health issues, she was very good, but uh, just in those last few years. But we thank God that she was a very committed Christian woman and uh, lived to be 96. In fact, I think we... Oh, there she is. That's, uh, that's my mother-in-law, my late mother-in-law. Got to be 96. And I know that she certainly honoured her parents. In fact, her father was a Lutheran minister. And so, again, we look at that promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy a long life on the earth. She got to 96. So today I honour her as well and her Christian commitment and love of Christ. And finally, we have spoken today about honouring mothers and fathers, but more importantly, let us honour, cherish and love our Heavenly Father, the one we can call Abba Father. There are three verses in the Bible that refer to Abba Father. Galatians 4, we read, But when the fullness of time had come... God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. How wonderful to have that relationship 
with God that we can actually call him Abba Father. He's not distant, but he is our father. And to dig deeper into that phrase Abba, uh, it's an Aramaic word for father. It's used by Jesus and Paul to address God in a relation of personal intimacy. Abba is sometimes used by uh, little Jewish children. Did you know that? Towards their fathers and best translated papa or daddy. In fact, I know of a, a Jewish father in Brisbane and his children call him Abba. We've got, uh, I think, uh, have we got one more slide left there? Yeah, just in conclusion. So I just want to say a happy Mother's Day for next Sunday. Ha ha, no he. To all the mothers here today, maybe instead of sending a text message or a card from a gift shop, perhaps you can honour the founder of Mother's Day, Anna Jarvis, and write a letter with your own personal words to your mother. So today, let's give honour to God. In the last book of Bible, we read uh, in Revelation 4.11, just finishing off with this verse, you are worthy, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power, for you created all things, Lord, and by your will they existed and were created. We're going to close in prayer to our Abba Father. And I'm going to put Nick on the spot. Yes, because I'd like you just to close in prayer for us today in a prayer to our uh, Abba Father. Thank you, Nick. And, and, and in, in Japanese.